This is a work by Thomas Aikens that was completed in the last decades of the 19th century, and the exhibition begins with late 19th century works to demonstrate how photographers and painters were interdependent on one another. In addition to seeing this picture, which is one of Aiken's most celebrated, we also have the photographs that he made and then used for depicting the images in his painting. He took these photographs and he projected them onto the canvas and he made little tiny dots around the edge of the forms so that when he painted he knew exactly where to position them. And this is an instance where the painter is really taking advantage of photography to clarify what he's doing and to infuse his painting with a degree of detail that gives it a heightened sense of realism. This is a painting by Frederick Remington. This is called The Flight. And Frederick Remington made the painting based on photographs that he collected. Remington didn't make his own photographs. Rather, he collected photographs that gave him ideas for painting. And there's a photograph in the exhibition to the right of this picture that we can see he used as the uh, subject matter in his painting. This is a work by Edward Steichen, who was both a photographer and a painter. And we have this photograph, which is a self-portrait of Steichen. And he, of course, presents himself as a painter. And you can see in the Steichen image that it's a very fuzzy and sort of hazy contours around Steichen, which is an example of pictorialism. In other words, imitating how paintings look. This is one of Alfred Stieglitz's most famous photographs. It's called The Steerage from 1907. And what's most important about it is that it's an example of what Stieglitz calls straight photography. So what you see is an arrangement of forms that create a very interesting series of geometric patterns. This diagonal, another diagonal here, the repetition of circles and half circles throughout the composition. And one of the things that's important to him is to be defined as an artist who is also a photographer. This is a photograph by Paul Strand titled Abstraction Bowls. This picture was made in 1916 and it was a picture that O'Keeffe saw in 1917 and she was very, very infatuated with the kinds of photographs that he was making. Strand sent her this photograph in addition to two other prints and they were very important to her in terms of her being able to refine abstraction in her own work. And this watercolor made by Georgia O'Keeffe in 1917 is one of her most celebrated paintings and it's called Evening Star and she made it right after she saw the Strand abstraction bowls in New York City. I think if you think about abstraction bowls with this you can see that there's a degree of flatness and there's a degree of abstraction in this painting that I think comes from O'Keeffe's awareness of the abstract components of Strand's photograph abstraction bowls. This is a work by Stieglitz that dates from the 1920s. It's very different from his steerage of 1907. And what's interesting, if you think about this in relationship to the O'Keeffe picture, there are parallels between the um, way the forms work in this picture and the evening star. He was influenced by O'Keeffe's abstract watercolors of the teens. And he figured out a way to infuse photography with abstraction in a way that was as innovative as what Strand had done earlier on. Well, this is a photograph by Margaret Burke White, and it was taken in 1945 at Buchenwald. And if you will notice, the painter, Audrey Flack, uses this photograph and incorporates it into her painting, which is called World War II or Vanitas. And here, she incorporates the photograph directly into the painting. So we have the relationship between the painter and the photograph defined in a new way. And what she does is she arranges the entire composition. And then she makes a photograph of that. And from the photograph she then projects onto the canvas and she paints with an airbrush. It gives it a degree of heightened realism that is very compelling. This is a photograph by Cindy Sherman. And what's fascinating about it is that Cindy Sherman depicts herself. She is always the subject of her images. And what she's done here 
is make a photograph that refers to and is based on the history of painting. And we've juxtaposed this picture with a tiny image of a Renaissance painting by Hans Holbein to show that she's basing her photograph on an earlier tradition of painting. The other thing that's interesting about this photograph is that it's very large. So when you first see it, you can almost mistake it for a painting. So this is another example in the exhibition of how these two different mediums interact with one another. There's a very strong relationship between capturing the image in photography and painting the image in painting. The idea for this exhibition came from the in very interesting papers that were presented at a symposium that we had that addressed the idea of painting and photography in American art from the late 19th, 19th century to the present. And three of the artists who are represented in this exhibition, uh, Barclay Hendricks, Audrey Flack, and Robert Bechtel, will be here for a symposium that we're having this summer, which takes place from the 14th through 16th of July. And they will be participating on a panel that will be moderated by Jonathan Weinberg, who was one of the co-curators for this show. So that last symposium really generated the idea for this exhibition, and I hope you'll see, we'll see you at the symposium this summer.